First tonight at 10 o'clock, our investigation into high prices on utility bills that Oklahomans will be paying for many years to come. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lori Fulbright. And I'm Craig Day. A significant percentage of the higher cost is the result of that seven-day period in February two years ago. Oklahomans will have to pay it for the next 28 years. In a joint investigation with Oklahoma Watch, News on 6's Dana Hurtnicki looks into what happened. There will be a lot of discussions. Develop more stringent reserve requirements so that we can ensure to continue to be able to keep the lights on in the future. In February 2021, winter storm Uri gripped Oklahoma in its icy grasp. Baby, Temperatures plummeted, snow moved in, and utilities warned and sometimes carried out rolling blackouts. Three and a half percent of the bill. Oklahomans not realizing once the ice thawed, they would be on the hook for an additional two, three, or even $4,000 per household spread out over the next nearly three decades. I don't know about anybody else, but the only thing that I've ever financed for 30 years has been my house. Those like Ellen Graham and her husband, who are also small business owners. For their home, their last electric bill shows an extra $4.35 for the winter storm and $10.04 for gas. That's a new high for us. In addition, their business has another $14.33 for electric and $50 for gas. I can do that, but what about the people that can't? Reports show Oklahomans are paying more for the storm than anywhere else in the country. Utilities say it all goes back to the price of natural gas during the height of the storm, where prices that are usually around $1.90 soared to $1,200. Oklahoma, for whatever reason, was paying the highest prices in the whole region, and everyone was affected by the same storm. So at some points, it got up to 600 times the normal level of what we were buying gas for before the storm hit. Paul Moneys with Oklahoma Watch has been reporting on winter storm costs since 2021 and Oklahoma utilities for over a decade. Together, we spent months sorting through hundreds of pages of regulatory filings and public information requests. There's other states that have done some stuff on their own cases that come from, from the storm. Uh, and in fact, Minnesota, um, their attorney general recommended them taking off about $60 million in their storm costs uh, because they didn't think the utilities acted wisely during that storm. And so that was only 10% of what they asked for in Minnesota, but it shows that there are other ways to get into this and other states have done some more work that maybe we didn't get to in Oklahoma. We reached out to Oklahoma Natural Gas, but no one from the company would agree to an interview nor would they answer any of our questions. We were very concerned for our customers. But an executive from OG&E did agree to sit down with us. So our primary responsibility was to maintain the electric supply to our customers. And I think we did that well. We just had to pay for the gas at the levels that were available in the marketplace. But Oklahoma was so much higher, so much higher than anywhere else in the country. Well, we have a lot of natural gas here, and we have a lot of natural gas infrastructure. And so we have a lot of development, you know, exploration for natural gas. And when all of that production froze up, the price here probably went up more than it did in other places. They had the expertise in gas procurement, and uh, there were missteps. And when you and I make mistakes, we have to pay for them. And um, they didn't. Uh, the customers are on the hook for all of it. The legislature quickly passed securitization, ultimately pushing the entire $2.7 billion debt, plus an additional $2 billion in interest and fees onto ratepayers. These so-called ratepayer back bonds, sometimes called securitization, are the worst fleecing of Oklahoma ratepayers in the history of Oklahoma. Commissioner Bob Anthony was the sole no vote at the Corporation Commission who ultimately had to approve the deals. He argued through deceit and conflict of interest, the process imposed hundreds of millions of dollars in unnecessary costs. Ratepayers deserve to know how much they're being asked to pay and who's getting the money they deserve to know the names of the brokerage companies, of the law firms, of the financial advisors, of the consultants, and anybody that 
was getting money and is still getting money. They deserve to know the truth and the facts. And if they did, a lot of it would be horrifying. And yes, I will say there are circumstances of public corruption that are involved in this overall matter. There's no wrongdoing there. This has been vetted at every level. It's been vetted by the Supreme Court. Commission Chair Todd Hyatt, who voted for securitization, argues they took a year reviewing the process and the utilities' actions during the storm. In addition, he says without securitization, ratepayer bills could have soared an average of more than $1,000 per month for a year. This is not a good deal, but it is the best deal we can possibly present for the, for the public. When you start talking about things that affect people's pocketbooks, let's be fair. Still, those like Ellen continue to wonder what happens the next time temperatures drop. Is this going to change, maybe? I'd love to see some good come out of this. I'm just not sure if that's where it's going to go. Dana Hurtnicky, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. We want to let you know that we did reach out to PSO and the utility answered our questions. They say paying the historically high fuel costs during winter storm URI was necessary to maintain stability of the grid and provide consistent service during an extreme and life-threatening event. The company goes on to say it made no profit from the extraordinary high natural gas prices. Since the storm, PSO has added steps to mitigate future price risk should sudden spikes in energy supplies happen again.